let's talk a little bit more about uh, the infallibility of the Pope now, or when he speaks infallible. I had mentioned in a previous video about uh, Peter when he said that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I was careful to point out the <clears throat> where it said, flesh and blood is not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. At that point, Peter, regardless of how he was, whether he was sin, whether he was full of sin, wasn't full of sin, or whatever was wrong in his life, at that particular time, he was able to receive an infallible teaching from God. That's why I was careful to point out when Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. God the Father revealed to Peter an infallible truth about Jesus Christ. Peter was able then to receive that infallible truth to let others know about it. <clears throat> it didn't mean that Peter wasn't sinless or anything else. Is that Peter had the ability, <coughs> excuse me, to receive an infallible truth. Uh, now then, the Pope is only infallible when in union with the bishops, with the body of bishops, speaks from the chair of Peter, or ex cathedral from the chair, on issues concerning morals and faith. Any other time the Pope speaks, doesn't mean that he speaks infallibly. Even though he might, it doesn't mean that he does. Only when he speaks from the chair of Peter, which is called ex cathedral. And that is then in union with the body of bishops. There are so many people, I think, who believe that every time the Pope opens his mouth, he's supposed to be speaking infallibly, which simply is not the truth. There are two times that has caused people some problems where the uh, Pope has spoken ex cathedral. Uh, and one was in 1854 when uh, it was uh, the, on the Immaculate Conception of Mary, and the other one was in uh, 1950 on the Assumption of Mary, where the Pope spoke, spoke as cathedra and made them a dogma of the Church, or a doctrine of the Church, which were infallible teachings. And it wasn't at that time when they decided to start teaching about the Immaculate Conception. They'd been taught for years before that. It wasn't in 1950 when they started teaching about the Assumption of Mary. It had been taught a year before that. But up to all this time, uh, the Pope was able to receive from God that, yes, it's true, an infallible teaching that Mary, uh, about the Immaculate Conception, and that is Mary was born without the stain of original sin. That is something the Pope received from God as an infallible teaching. And he spoke from the chair of Peter. So it isn't every time the Pope opens his mouth that he's speaking uh, infallibly. That doesn't mean that the Pope is without sin. The Pope goes to confession just like other Catholics do. Uh, I see so many comments where people, rather than doing any research on infallibility whatsoever, just parrot what they think the Catholic Church teaches about it, or uh, parrot what they think the Catholic Church means by it, without ever actually asking a Catholic or looking in the writings of the Catholic Church to determine what uh, infallibility of the Pope means. Uh, again, uh, the Pope is only infallible when he, in union with the body of bishops, speaks from the chair of Peter, or ex cathedral from the chair, on issues concerning faith, faith and morals. It doesn't matter, you know, uh, so many people throw with so much garbage together. If it doesn't, if it doesn't have anything to do with the teaching on doctrines and the faith and morals that we follow, it's not ex cathedral. Uh, I see, you know, I see so many people. Well, what about this? Well, uh, the Catholic Church did this, or the Catholic Church did that. Well, maybe they did, and maybe they didn't. But that has nothing to do with the infallibility of the Pope. Uh, the the faith of the Pope has nothing to do with the infallibility of the, of the Pope. It is whether or not that person who is sitting on the chair of Peter as Pope of the, or head of the Catholic Church is able to receive an infallible teaching from God, as Peter was. Uh, when he received an infallible uh, teaching from God on the character of Jesus Christ and confessed that Jesus Christ, uh, that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, he was able to receive an infallible teaching regardless of Peter's character or anything else. And that is what the infallibility uh, uh means in that case. Is that person who sits on the chair of Peter able to receive an infallible teaching? Uh, 
that is why a succession of the popes is so important. Where that succession has been handed down now for some 264 popes. Uh, on down and on down and on down. The pope doesn't sit around just, oh, what can I speak on today? There's going to be extra cathedral. Or, you know, well, what else can I speak on extra cathedral? I want to speak extra cathedral song. Now, he did not sit around doing that. But when the, when the opportunity arises where something has to be settled, where it is going to be a universal teaching, then if the Pope, uh, after a careful study and, 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 uh, and conference with the bishops, he decides to, to declare something as a universal teaching, and he then speaks as cathedral from the chair, declaring it a universal teaching. Uh, now I'm going to be saying much more about this and pointing out cases of uh, infallibility and show why it is so important, especially on the succession of the popes. It has to be that way. Uh, now then, <clears throat> contrary to what people believe, <clears throat> this wasn't given to everyone. It was only given to Peter and his successors. Uh, and I mentioned in my last video, uh, you know, the, the madness has got to stop somewhere. When it comes to the tenets of our faith and what we believe in major doctrines on faith and morals, Someone has to have the ability to receive an infallible teaching from God. Someone has to have the truth. God did not give us a Bible and say every man for himself just interpret it any way you want to. He left an infallible guide for us when it comes to faith and morals. Uh, you know, when it comes to the rest of the Bible, uh, I'm free to interpret it the way I want to interpret it. I have talked with uh, several priests about it, and uh, you know they always tell me, to tread with caution. Uh, you know, be sure of what you're saying. Check with the writings of the church fathers. Check with others. And if we haven't spoken on it, you know, you're free to interpret it any way you want it to interpret it. Uh, but just be careful when you do that you study it as best you can before you make a theological decision like that. Uh, so again, uh, I want those re to remember, the Pope is infallible every time he stands out of the balcony and gives a sermon. He is infallible when he's standing up in front of somebody giving a speech. He is infallible just when he's walking down the road talking to someone. He, he sins like everyone else sins. But he is infallible and able to receive an infallible teaching from God when he speaks from the chair of Peter, ex cathedral, on issues concerning faith and uh, morals. Uh, again, I've got a whole lot more I'm be doing on this, but I just wanted to bring this out today so you know where I'm coming from on it and it'll help you to understand it better, hopefully, as I get into other videos about this. Until next time, this has been Golly saying, God.